At the beginning of the freshman year, we give students a diagnostic assessment to figure out what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Um, and we have kids who come in reading two, three, and four grades behind grade level. To give my students the education they deserve, I need to have an attitude that says, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll go above and beyond, and I will go the extra mile to ensure that they're passing their classes, um, they're learning what they have to learn, and they're on their way to college. My name is Tyler Hester, and I grew up in Marin County, California. Um, I went to great schools when I was young. My mom was able to give me great educational opportunities. Um, I went to Branson High School in Marin County, and I went to Stanford for undergrad. I went to Cambridge University for graduate school. Um, and while I was at Cambridge, I was studying the politics of education. I just came to believe really firmly that education is a civil rights issue of our generation. That so many thousands and millions of kids every year, frankly every day, are having life opportunities cut off from them. I was in England and I was kind of deciding between do I get a PhD, um, do I say and learn to essentially talk pretty about education, um, or do I get some skin in the game and go into the classroom. When I greet kids as they come through that door, I say, good to see you. And then I say, show me your homework from the night before. And if they don't have their homework, they get a 60 minute detention after school that day. And they all serve that detention. They say this to me in the first couple of days of school. They say, Ms. Esther, last year, there were only like two or three kids who did their homework every day. And now we've got only one or two kids who don't do their homework every day. And it dawns on them that this is a place with profoundly different expectations. And that's just another way that those expectations manifest themselves. A lot of my students come from middle schools where um, teachers have trouble controlling the class. And so they're used to talking whenever they want, essentially. So one of the most important things I do in the first few days of the school year is communicate to them really clearly that it is unacceptable to talk when they shouldn't be talking and that I will enforce that expectation. And for a lot of them, it's a shock to see someone have such high expectations in terms of whispering and preparedness. Um, and if in the first few days of the school year they see not only that I give those consequences but that I follow through, that you will have a meeting if on two separate occasions you don't meet my expectations, that you will get a call home if on three separate occasions you don't meet my expectations, and that you will go to the office if on four separate occasions you don't meet my expectations. When they see that not only am I consistent and fair with delivering those consequences but that I'll do it every time and I'll follow through, um, then they just feel that this is a safe place where they know what to expect based on their behavior. Um, and when they get that, then it just becomes calm. And, it be, and as long as I make sure I'm fair with regards to giving out those consequences, um, then there's respect that can be maintained. Whereas if I were unfair, I don't even deserve respect. I need to be able to treat each and every one of them um, like someone who is capable of doing the right thing. I kind of thought he was weird a little bit, but once I got to know him, I thought like he was a good guy, personally. He was a tad bit strict, but I thought that's what we needed in order to stay on track. We need that strictness to keep us on track so we can be where we need to be in school. So I don't think that the strictness was a bad thing, but he also made class a lot of fun. Like he would do music examples and we could like walk around. It wasn't like sit and teach, sit in the seat, write down what he says, and then that's it and you leave. We actually did stuff and it made it enjoyable. Like I didn't mind coming to English class this last year. Okay, better. We'll get it. I mean, he got, he, got, he got faith in us to believe that we can do it, so I believe that's good, that they're high and not low. So I don't really think it's strict. One, two, three. Ooh. 
All right, not bad for the first time. In middle school, I, um, if teachers didn't care, I didn't care. So um, I felt like uh, if they don't, they don't care, then why should I care of what I'm doing? And then when I came to this school and Mr. Hester started teaching, I started seeing, um, like, I do care. Like, I want to go to college and do something in life. Well, the first few days, I thought it was kind of weird how he taught. But then I eventually realized that it was sort of like to get us into it. Like clap means pay attention. Um, I don't know, snap means do your work, stuff like that kind of stuff. So it's been pretty rare to find a teacher like that. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, he said that like on the first day of school. He was like, you will succeed, you will go to college. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess I'm going to college now. So. I'm here to make sure you get the education you deserve. So when I give, guys, that like verbal warning, or when I give you homework center, I'm doing it because I want you to go to college. I'm not doing it so I can have an easy day. Get that? I was a bad teacher my first year of teaching. Um, I, I remember one occasion vividly where I literally lost control of my class. It was third period in my first year of teaching and I was asking them to be quiet and they weren't. And then I, raised my voice and I said, we need to be quiet. And they weren't. And I stepped outside, I had to call the dean in. And the dean came in and chewed him out for a few minutes. But I literally lost control of my class. I'll never forget that. I just was not effective at getting kids to meet my expectations. So I kind of became obsessed with management and engagement and ensuring the kids met my expectations. And I know that if I were a first year teacher, I would love to have seen how a fourth year's teacher's first day looked and sounded like. How they actually gave that consequence, what they gave that consequence for, how they told students what to do. The fact that we are brothers and sisters, and then the fact that they're not being served, just got me ticked off and made me motivated to come teach here and to try to fight on a very micro level for educational justice.